Welcome back to Von Blues Boxing, man. What's going on with everybody? So, man, what a upset this weekend. I had to do this video about Brian Mendoza, man. What an upset. What an upset. What an upset. Man, Brian Mendoza, Sebastian Vendora. If you didn't see the fight, go back and watch it, man. What an upset. I mean, Brian Mendoza this year has had, I believe it's this year, so far this year, or like late last year, has had one of the most feel-good, how can I say it, one of the most feel-good stories this year. I mean, this man has came out of nowhere. You know, at 160 pounds, he went up. He was a two-week replacement for Jason Rosario, former 154 unified champion. Now, granted, Jason has had some – I mean, it's, it's been rough. Ever since that Jamel Charlo loss, you know, getting stopped by Lubin, um, stopped by Jamel Charlo and Lubin, nothing to hang your hat – you know, to hold your head down on. But, you know, Rosario – was at 160, you know, go went up weight, and Brian Mendoza goes in there and just puts it on him and stops him, you know. So that was already an upset. You know, he was 11-1 favorite in coming into that fight. Then Brian Mendoza takes another fight, another tough, hard fight, a really tough fight against Sebastian Vendora, who we know um, – it's a an anomaly at six foot six, I believe, at 154 pounds, six foot five, six foot six at 154 pounds. Yes, an anomaly. But Sebastian Vendora was coming off. Um, I think was it Lubin his last fight? Or was it Sergio Garcia? I think it was Sergio Garcia. I'm not I don't know. I gotta remember. I gotta remember. But we knew Sebastian Vendora was red hot after stopping Erickson Lubin in the fight of the year type of candidate. That fight was excellent. You know, and that was a big win. That woke up everybody to Sebastian Vendora. And we realized Sebastian Vendora was for real. We was like, damn, this dude might be, you know what I'm saying? Hey, Jermell, this might be your toughest challenge in this division. You know what I'm saying? Some people were saying that. You know, some people was believing that Vendora could beat Jermell Charlo. You know what I'm saying? Which is nothing wrong with that. You know what I'm saying? The dude's a pressure fighter. He punches hard. He puts a ton of pressure. He's got good cardio. He's tall. He's long. He's awkward. You know what I'm saying? All those things. But there was always, oh, it was always openings against Vendora because of his style. You know, him being six foot six, he gives up his height. He likes fighting in the inside. That's just his style. He likes to get forward, come and put pressure and break his opponents down with punching volume and, you know, body head, attacking the body and head and just wearing his opponents down, using his size, hanging, putting his weight on him, even though he's slim, but he's still a big guy. So, you know, putting all that weight on you, wearing you down, just constantly wearing his opponents down. And then he's hard to hit because of his height. But you can hit him, but he's hard to hit, you know, he's hard to hit in the head at that tall, at being that tall in that division. And he's just, he, you know, he's been pretty much on a tear. And in this fight against Brian Mendoza, Brian Mendoza was losing. You know what I'm saying? He was losing. And it was looking like maybe Fedora going to get him out of there in late. But out of nowhere, Brian Fedora lands the lead left hook of the year. You know what I'm saying? Possibly upset of the year so far. Early upset of the year. You know what I'm saying? And just detonates on Fedora. Like, you got to go listen to it here and Real time, real time speed. I mean, it you can hear it. <sighs> he hits him. Fedora is hurt. Comes over with a right cross and then finishes up with a left hook. And Fedora was defenseless. You know, he was out of it already. After that left hook already had him out of it. And then those punches, you know, with your hands down and you defend. Oh, man. It just teed off on him and just got him out of there. And it was just nasty the way Fedora hit it. Oh, hit his head. Oh, that was, that was, woo. I was like, oh. You know what I'm saying? I knew it was over. When Fedora went down, I said, oh, it's over. I said, Fedora ain't getting up from that. He tried to, like, he's, he's, you know, get hit with three hard, clean punches like that. But, see, the thing is, Fedora in that sequence right there, in that sequence, Fedora threw the jab twice at a shorter range. It was, like, kind of short. It was, like, inside, mid-range. He threw a jab 
which isn't good at that height with that range to throw it in that close and get from and Brian Mendoza just timed it. He's seen it all. He's gonna throw the same punch again. Boom. Same way Paul Williams got caught by Sergio Martinez in the second fight. Same way, same punch, everything, same kind of sequence. Fedora leaning all the way in, you know what I'm saying? Leaning all the way in, you know what I'm saying? He was leaning in, and boom, caught him. And so, Brian Mendoza is, I mean, he's having a crazy year, man. He's having a crazy year. I mean, it's been a good year for him, man. And now he's an intern. W, I think, what is he, intern or like silver or something? He's, he owns part of the WBC. He's now number one contender. Now he's put himself in title contention. He's in title contention. And if anything that tells boxers out there in this world, especially young or older, take those opportunities when they come. You know what I'm saying? Brian Mendoza put it, took every op the opportunity came and he pressed it every time. He could have took a try to take an easier fight than Jason Rosario. He could have just been like, all right, I'm a, nah. Went in there, beat Jason Rosario. Could have okay, you know what, I'm going to fight somebody else, you know, in between, you know, maybe somebody like Terrell Gasha, you know what I'm saying, Get, I cannot say that man name, right? Terrell Gasha, maybe um, fight him or something like that, that type of opponent. No, he takes the Sebastian Vendora to fight. Mendoza proved in boxing, if you take risks and you take chances, this is the type of success you can have. This is the type of position you could put yourself in quickly. Mendoza did that in a year, not even a full year. He's a, and now he can put himself in another fight. He can go fight in another, he can go fight another good fight. Now he can fight somebody like Aisha. He can go fight maybe Tim Zhu, depending on how long, yeah, Jamel Charlo injured. I know, I want to see Charlo and Zhu too, but Zhu was talking about fighting already. So if Tim want to get back in the ring, that's a good opponent. Brian Mendoza now is going to make more money since he owns part of a title. He's number one in the ranking. So look at the opportunities. Now his profile is bigger. He's coming off two sensational knockout wins. His profile just got bigger. People are going to know who he is. Watch, he's going to start getting more interviews. People are going to start contacting him more. You know what I'm saying? He's going to open up sponsorships, other little sponsorships, maybe around where he's where he from and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? That's why, man. Boxing. Boxers out there. Take them opportunities when them chances come, man. Look at Brian Mendoza. Nobody gave him a chance against Jason Rosario. He was a big, he was 11-1 underdog. Then... He was another under, and he was a big underdog against Pandora. And he was losing. He was losing. It was looking bad for him for it. It was looking bad. I ain't gonna lie. I was like, oh, Mendoza's starting to wear down. I'm like, Pandora didn't got to him. But what I didn't understand about Sebastian Pandora's game plan in this fight, this man was using his jab. Like we've been talking about, even the announcers was talking about. Like, like I've been saying about Pandora, he needs to learn how to use his height. He's six foot six. Use the damn height. Throw long, straight punches. Keep the jab. Throw that thing a million times. You know what I'm saying? And keep these fighters at bed. You can pick up wins like this. You can pick up wins a lot more easier. But Vendora, it's inherited in him. But I also think it's part of him wanting to be an entertaining fighter. I think sometimes Vendora gets caught up in, oh, I want to be entertaining. Everybody knows my style for being entertaining because I push the pace. I get in the guys. I, we, I fight in the inside. I wear guys down. I break them down. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's also sometimes an issue with Fedora. You know what I'm saying? Because he wants to, he gives up his height so much. He gives these guys that shorter them opportunities to get him. Lubin showed that in this fight. Even though Lubin took a beating, but. He showed that in that fight. Fedora gives up his height too much. And he, he was made to pay for it. This time, he paid for it dearly. He paid for it with Lubin before, but he paid for it dearly in this fight. Brian and Mendoza was at 160 and then came down to 154. So he retains power in both divisions. And Fedora paid for it. He eventually caught him up. He's still a good fighter. He still has a bright future. It's just Fedora got to work on some things. 
you know, moving his feet a little bit more. I know that's not his thing, but he's got to learn how to use his feet a little bit more. And he's got to learn how to fight tall. Fedora, you were doing excellent in the first couple of rounds. But I think it got in his head and his dad. And I think him and Pops was like, oh, we got him. Go get him. Fedora, you ain't always got to be entertaining, brother. Sometimes it's good to just, just get the win. You know, use those physical tools you got. You got boxing skills, too. You ain't no slouch. Use those tools. Keep these dudes at the end of your punches. Ain't no reason to be giving them up height and fighting the inside. The only time you do that is when they cut the distance down on you. Or you see that they wear, they're wearing down. They're, like, really, really physically wearing down. And I think in his head, he thought that against Brian Mendoza. Him and his dad and them. They was like, oh, he break, you can hear it in the corner. But... That's a part of the game. You know what I'm saying? Congratulations to Brian Mendoza, man. Congratulations, man. I, I, I can only imagine what you're feeling, bro. You have had a really, really, really excellent year, man. I know you've had a year, one of the best years of your life. And you appreciate it. And you deserve it, man, because you took risks. And a lot of boxers don't do that nowadays. A lot of boxers, they just... And I ain't hating on the boxers or nothing like that. They just... And don't take the risk like that. Some boxers do, but a lot of them don't when the opportunity is there. I salute you, Brian Mendoza, man. Wish we had more boxers like you, man. Our boxing could be one of the top sports again, but until then, it's going to be the way it is. And to Sebastian Vendor, hold your head up, man. It's a learning lesson. One loss will not define you. Sebastian Vendor, suck it up. He'll rest, Brian, Sebastian. You'll be fine, bro. One loss doesn't define you. Learn from it. Work on some things that you feel like you need to work on. I think you'd be fine. You'd be back in position. A couple of fights, bro. Don't hold your head. It happens. It can happen to any boxer. It's boxing. Von Blue's boxing. I'm out.